In the vast, unforgiving skies of the Mojave Desert, something strange is happening. Two fighter jets, one polished like a mirror, the other blacked out like a shadow, have been spotted dancing above China Lake. One is a stealthy 5th gen F-35C, but not like any we've seen before. This one gleams, literally. Its chrome-coated skin reflects the desert sun like a disco ball at 35,000 feet. The other, a jet black F-A-18 Super Hornet. An icon, a proven veteran with plenty of fights still left bearing the unmistakable markings of something far more secretive. These aren't your standard Navy jets. These are vampires. And no, that's not just a nickname. The unit behind these aircraft, VX-9, has a reputation. Silent, experimental, and always one step ahead of what we think is possible in modern air combat. But here's the question that's left even seasoned aviation watchers scratching their heads. Why would the U.S. Navy deliberately strip away the stealth coating on its premier fighter and replace it with something that screams, look at me? Is this chrome skin a clever trick? Built to confuse heat-seeking sensors and optical trackers? Or is it hiding something even more advanced? A next-gen material a sensor array, maybe a preview of the elusive sixth generation F-47. But while that mysterious future still lies on the horizon, something else is happening right now. The F-35 is being transformed. A massive Block 4 upgrade is rolling out, and it's set to redefine what this jet can actually do in combat. And VX-9, they're not just testing these upgrades, they're pushing the envelope, launching SM-6 missiles from Vandy-1, rewriting what we thought a Super Hornet was capable of. Today, you're getting a special doubleheader. We're diving deep into the classified world of naval flight testing, shadowy aircraft, next-gen warfare tech, and a look at one of the most storied squadrons in the Navy. You see, this isn't just a story about stealth fighters. This is the front line of the future. Let's dive into it right now. Pilotphotog.com Let's begin with the Lightning's biggest overhaul yet, known as Block 4. The F-35, like many fighters, is updated in batches called Blocks. The current Lightnings are Block 3, with Block 4 upgrades scheduled for installation this year. Block 4 will add a ton of new features, including improved target recognition software and increased missile capacity. That's right, Lightnings will be able to carry even more missiles. And before you say external hardpoints ruin stealth, well, it looks like these F-35s will be able to fit 6 AMRAMs internally instead of 4. Now. Most people think of stealth as simply staying hidden from radar, but few people realize that electronic warfare or EW is equally crucial. And when it comes to EW capabilities, the F-35 is essentially a flying data center. And it stands nearly unmatched in the EW department. Now Block 4 will introduce major upgrades that will put it far ahead of any current aircraft. For instance, Block 4 is going to include enhanced radio frequency, or RF, sensors that will allow the Lightning to detect, classify, and analyze enemy radars at greater ranges and with better resolution. More on that in a minute. Along with identifying and analyzing those radars, Block 4 Lightnings will add more advanced digital radio frequency memory, or DRFM, jamming. The interesting thing is that DRFM is going to allow the Lightning to replicate and manipulate enemy radar signals. Can you see where this is going? Hang on and I'll give you a scenario in just a minute. Block 4 is also going to give the F-35 upgraded cyber warfare and networking capabilities. This will allow the Lightning to share that precious EW data with other aircraft and ground stations in real time. This effectively makes the Lightning the eyes and ears of the fleet 
or the Force. But it doesn't stop there. Along with detecting, analyzing, and manipulating enemy radar, the upgraded Lightnings will also be able to perform jamming attacks on enemy installations without using any external jamming pods so that its stealth remains preserved. All right, here's the scenario that I mentioned earlier. Imagine an F-35 on a deep penetration strike mission into highly contested airspace that's being guarded by an S-400 missile defense system. The S-400 is on alert and scanning for intruders. The F-35's onboard AN-ASQ Barracuda system detects the radar long before the enemy even sees the F-35. The Lightning's onboard systems analyze the S-400's output and uses its DRFM jamming to send back a false signal. This tricks the S-400 into thinking the jet is somewhere it is not or that there's nothing there at all. So now you have a radar operator that is confused and misled. This plays exactly into the Lightning's hands. If for some reason the enemy tries to launch a missile, the F-35 can then disrupt the missile's guidance system with an electronic cyber attack directed at that missile. With these Block 4 upgrades, the F-35 easily becomes one of the most survivable aircraft in contested airspace. And it can simply operate in areas that legacy aircraft would simply struggle. Now, just like your gaming PC, in order to get these performance enhancements, you're gonna have to do some hardware upgrades first. For the Lightning's Block 4 to happen, it first has to go through Technology Refresh 3 or TR3. The military sure loves their acronyms, don't they? TR3 will add a new integrated core processor along with an enhanced panoramic cockpit display, a larger memory unit, and other classified capabilities. Now it's safe to say that much of the TR3 and Block 4 testing is being done at the crews over at VX9, and we'll get to them in a minute. But what about that chrome coating? Well, as far as we can tell, that's not part of Block 4. It looks to be an experiment encountering infrared search and track or IRST sensors. These sensors use telescopes and IR cameras to visually find and track an object, in this case a fighter. Now, so far, all the detection systems we've been talking about have been based on electronic emissions such as radio waves or better known as radar. As we've seen, those signals can be analyzed and jammed. The challenge with IRST is that it's a passive system, meaning they don't give off any emissions, so you can't jam them. Now, increasingly, IRST is becoming more and more of a threat to stealth aircraft. And quick side note. IRST is so important that the F-35 has its own onboard system. It's mounted under the nose in a sapphire enclosing. On the Lightning, this is known as EOTS or Electro-Optical Targeting System. The EOTS is an upgrade to the Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod, but instead of a stealth canceling external pod, EOTS is built into the jet. Now what makes the EOTS special is that it combines the infrared scanning of an IRST along with the Lightning's other onboard systems like the ASA radar and the Distributed Aperture System or DAS. This helps the Lightning build a complete threat picture. So at the end of the day, the Lightning's EOTS is more than just an IRST. This allows the Lightning to track targets in multiple spectrums at the same time. All right, now let's get back to the enemy IRST systems and why they're dangerous to stealth fighters. Again, since they're passive and can't be jammed, your next best defense is to go invisible. And this is likely what the mirror coating is. Think of it as an adaptive camouflage that reflects the surroundings to blend in. Getting back to the upgrades, in order to power all these advanced systems, the F-35 is going to need two things, more electricity and more cooling, both of which come from the aircraft's engine. To solve this problem, General Electric and Pratt & Whitney submitted a proposal for an engine upgrade competition. Pratt & Whitney proposed upgrading their existing F-135 engine, while GE proposed a new adaptive cycle engine. After an extensive review, the DoD has settled on upgrading the existing Pratt & Whitney F-135 engine, and that comes in the form of the Enhanced Engine Package, or EEP. Yep, another acronym. The EEP will give the F-35's engine 10% more thrust, 
50% better thermal management or cooling, and 25% more fuel efficiency, which will increase the Lightning's range or loiter time. And speaking of enhancements, we are almost at the point where we're going to talk about VX9 and that famous Fan D1. But first, as you can imagine, with all these upgrades, the F-35 will be packed to the gills with advanced sensors and cyber warfare technologies to protect it against enemy threats. But unlike military jets equipped with all those sophisticated countermeasures, your personal information online is wide open and vulnerable unless you do something to protect it. If you've ever been hit with non-stop robocalls, sketchy emails, or junk email that knows way too much about you, well, that's not a coincidence. Your personal info is probably floating around the internet, thanks to data brokers. These companies collect your data and sell it. Names, addresses, phone numbers, even info about your relatives. In the wrong hands, that kind of access opens the door to scams, ID theft, and privacy violations you might never see coming. Incogni is a service that fights back. It works behind the scenes to contact data brokers, demand removal of your information, and monitor to make sure it doesn't come back. Hit the link in the description and use my code PILOTPHOTOG to get 60% off your annual Incogni plan. It's time to stop leaving your data exposed and start protecting what matters most online, your digital footprint. All right, now let's turn our attention to the legendary squadron behind these groundbreaking tests, the VX-9 Vampires. Before there was VX-9, there were two pioneering squadrons that led the way in testing the Navy's latest aviation technologies. Those were VX-4 and VX-5. Maybe you can see where the 9's coming from already. Starting with VX-4, they were known as the Evaluators, and they were established just after World War II at Naval Air Station Point Magoo in California. For nearly five decades, VX-4 was instrumental in air-to-air -air combat innovation. They meticulously evaluated cutting-edge fighter tactics and weapon systems. The squadron famously tested some iconic missiles, such as the AIM-7 Sparrow, the AIM-9 Sidewinder, and of course, the long-range AIM-54 Phoenix missile for the F-14 Tomcat. Now, VX-4 didn't just test missiles, they revolutionized dogfighting tactics, perfected aerial intercept methods, and played a critical role in refining fleet-wide combat readiness during the Cold War. Meanwhile, VX-5, known as the Vampires, specialized in air-to-ground warfare. They were based primarily at Naval Air Station China Lake, California. VX-5 rigorously evaluated and integrated new strike weapons, guided bombs, and sophisticated targeting pods into the Navy's inventory. To do this, VX-5 would conduct countless live fire tests and evaluations. And they played a vital role in developing precision-guided munitions and pioneering ground attack strategies and tactics. Their meticulous approach greatly enhanced the accuracy and effectiveness of carrier-based strike aircraft, which forever transformed naval aviation's capability to project power onto enemy shores and beyond. By 1993, with multi-role fighters becoming more prominent and budget cuts to pay the peace dividend, the Navy recognized the increased overlap between air-to-air -air and air-to-ground warfare and decided to merge VX-4 and VX-5 into a single integrated unit. So in June of 1993, VX-9, the Vampires, was officially established, bringing together the rich legacies of both squadrons into one elite testing unit. Today, VX-9 operates mainly from Naval Air Weapon Station China Lake, and they continue their tradition of innovation. The Vampires have been entrusted with evaluating cutting-edge technology and weapons for aircraft like as we've seen, the Chrome F-35 Lightning, and the Block 3 Super Hornet. VX-9 ensures that these next generation systems are thoroughly tested, refined, and combat ready, giving the US Navy and Marine Corps unmatched dominance in the skies. That chrome-coated F-35C that's been spotted outside of China Lake is just one example of how VX-9 continues to lead the charge, pushing the boundaries of aviation technology and tactical capability. A quick side note, my guess is that VX-9 is testing whatever the FAXX airplane is going to be. Now, expanding on that legacy of VX-9, 
the squadron continues to be at the forefront of testing and integrating advanced weaponry to enhance the U.S. Navy's combat capabilities. A great recent example is their involvement in the development and evaluation of the AIM-174B missile, which is an air-launched variant derived from the Standard Missile 6 or SM-6. Now the SM-6, officially known as the RAM-174 or Standard Extended Range Active Missile ERAM, was initially developed as a surface-to-air missile for naval ships equipped with the Aegis combat system. The SM-6, mounted on ships, gives extended range protection against fixed and rotary wing aircraft, even drones or unmanned vehicles, and cruise missiles. Recognizing its versatility and potential, the U.S. Navy explored adapting the SM-6 for air launch capabilities, which of course has led us to the development of the AIM-174B. Now check this out, back in September of 2024, our friends over at VX9 were spotted testing something pretty incredible. Their Jet Black FAA-18F Super Hornet, aka Vandy-1, was photographed carrying a heavy air-to-air -air loadout. This loadout included four AIM-174Bs, three AIM-120 Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missiles, or AMRAMs, and two AIM-9X Sidewinders. Now that's a lot of firepower on one jet. This wasn't just for show, they were pushing the Super Hornet to its limits, seeing just how much punch it could pack. Now some of you might even call that loadout OP, but the question is, why would they do this and what does it matter? Well here's the cool part, by adding these new AIM-174B missiles to the Super Hornet's arsenal, our Navy fighters can now reach out and touch threats from much further away than ever before. Remember that KG veteran analogy from earlier in the video? You can think of this configuration as giving our pilots a longer arm in a boxing match. They can land hits while staying safely out of range. And the folks at VX9 are making sure everything works perfectly before these systems go operational. And probably not a moment too soon given everything that's going on in Diego Garcia. So at the end of the day when it comes to testing new weapon systems, the vampires over at VX9 are really the unsung heroes here. They're the ones making sure our Navy pilots have the absolute best tools for the job, helping keep America's edge in the skies as sharp as ever. And again, with Iran's recent threats to the U.S. base at Diego Garcia, a little extra engagement range could not come at a better time. So let me wrap this up for you in a way that really brings it home. We've covered quite a journey today in this doubleheader, from that mysterious Chrome F-35C that's turning heads in the California sky to those amazing Block 4 upgrades that are basically giving the Lightning superpowers. And how cool is the story of VX-9? These vampires came from two incredible squadrons, VX-4's air-to-air -air expertise mixed with VX-5's ground attack mastery. And they're still out there pushing the boundaries every single day. You know what really gets me excited? The way these test pilots and engineers at VX-9 are working on game-changing projects, like that AIM-174B missile. They're not just testing new toys out there, they're making sure our Navy stays miles ahead of everyone else in the sky. Think about it, while other countries are trying to catch up, VX-9 is already living in tomorrow's world of stealth tech, electronic warfare, and advanced missiles. It's like they're writing the future of air combat, and with powerhouse platforms like the F-35 Lightning, that future is looking pretty incredible. Now, I'd love to hear your thoughts on all this. What's your take on that Chrome F-35C? Is it really just about beating infrared detection, or is there something else going on? And I'm sure VX9 has plenty of other cutting edge projects that we don't even know about yet. My guess is the FAXX is one of them. Would you be interested in a deep dive video about Vandy 1 and the whole SM6 story? And will the FAXX be its own jet or adapted from the future NGAD design? There's so much more to explore here. Let me know in the comments below. And before we sign off, one more thing about Vandy 1. At the end of the day, this jet has more DACA, and since it's painted red, it goes faster. If you know, you know. This is Tog signing off. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't. Keep looking to the skies, and now you know. PilotPhotog.com